they, they think we're speaking in code or we're sending some kind of signal to each other. We're not. I we're mean, not. I guess. I... Just sad and bizarre on so many levels uh, to listen to that back and forth between Casey Anthony uh, and her father. Joined now by Maria Hale, criminal defense attorney in Orlando, also a former prosecutor, and Tamara Holder, also a criminal defense attorney. Uh, good to have both of you with us today. You Thank know, you. There, there's so many layers to, to this story. And, and when you listen to the two of them going back and forth and you think about, you know, what has been said so far in this trial, Tamara, you know, what, what's your reaction? What does the jury take away from that? You know, I, I don't really know if the if these tapes have any really strong impact other than maybe uh, the family's trying to coach her into something or that she has some kind of pattern of lies. But we've been seeing that time and time again. This trial is about Casey Anthony being a compulsive liar. There's nothing damning here. There's nothing that uh, where she gives a confession. It's just more of her lies, and I don't think it has uh, really any strong effect. So, Maria, you know, what's your assessment? If you're the members of this jury are watching all of these uh, these tapes. Yesterday, they heard a very, uh, very strong questioning line of questioning that came from the police investigators on this case to Casey Anthony, and they were breaking down her story. No, she never had a job at Universal Studios. She dragged mm -hmm. them there. Right. Uh, you know, all of these stories that led nowhere for them. Uh, clearly, they're they're painting a picture of a person who lies, can't be trusted. You're absolutely right, but I respectfully disagree with Tamara in this case. I think these videos are extremely damaging for the defense and, and very powerful for the state. We've heard eight days of testimony of her lies upon lies upon lies, and granted, how, how much longer can we hear that she's lying? We get it. She's a liar. However, today you get to see now the dynamic between Casey Anthony and her father. And if for any reason the jury is sitting there at all thinking about what Jose Baez said in opening statement regarding the sexual abuse and the um, accidental drowning, this is helping paint that picture that this isn't a dynamic of a father and daughter that where there's, there's any type of issue between them. This is a loving father relationship. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you can't help, Tamara, but look at that tape between the two of them and think back to that, you know, shocking first day when Jose Baez mm -hmm. came out there and said this is a girl who's been abused by her father uh, and, you know, and by her brother, he also said, who we watched him get on the stand and there was no mention of that, which I thought was strange. You know, they're, they're thinking that as they watch these two people talk to each other. Well, well, I think that dynamics between people who are in sexually abusive relationships are very hard to tell from the outside looking in. That said, I have never agreed with Jose Baez's uh, opening statement that she was a victim of sexual abuse. Thousands of women are victims of sexual abuse in their own families and to strangers. They do not go and kill their daughters. But the problem here, Martha, is that although we know Casey Anthony is a liar, nobody can dispute that. The defense has, they created their own story that Kaylee drowned. We have no evidence of that whatsoever. So I don't understand why they created this new story instead of just poking holes in the prosecution right. and saying it could have been someone else, it wasn't Casey Anthony. Yeah, and you have to wonder if their whole, you know, the goal there was just to sort of obfuscate, to sort of throw other ideas out there, to plant these seeds in the jurors' minds uh, about what really happened because there's so little evidence about what really happened and linking Casey uh, directly to this crime, which is going to be very troublesome. <laughs> Another really troublesome thing, Maria, that was brought up this morning by Geraldo Rivera, who, who says that there's no indication from the tapes that we heard yesterday that she was ever read her Miranda rights. And he believes that right. this case could be thrown out on the basis of that. What do you think about that? I actually heard that this morning with Mr. Rivera, and I respect his legal opinion. The, uh, on the flip side of that, what the prosecution is going to say that um, there's a misperception with the public that Miranda has to be read to everyone who um, is even talked to by the police, and that's just simply not true. What Miranda says is that when a person is in custody and being inter interrogated, there has to be both a custodial interrogation. and. Only then, do, when the police is asking questions and the person is answering them, do they have to be read Miranda? Yeah. If, as long you, as the but, Mar, Mar, well, as long as law the, enforcement the standard, the standards, it, how you, how you determine the standard is if a reasonable person would think that they're not free to leave. Uh, Casey Anthony clearly was not free to leave, yeah. and although Geraldo has a point that this would have been brought up on a motion 
which I don't think the, the defense brought this up before the trial started. It, it is they actually did though, bring it up. It, they I mean, they brought the it point. up. Did she feel like she could tell the police to pull that car over and let her go home? Thanks, guys, but I've had enough, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, that That's going to be, uh, you know, what needs to be sort of proven in this case uh, in terms of those Miranda rights. It's an interesting point. Uh, lots of procedural Martha, stuff with us. Real Martha, quick, it was actually... It was actually a highly um, litigated motion prior to, and the judge has already made a ruling after listening to actually two days of testimony. But here's the thing, too. There's no evidence to suggest that she even wanted to leave or tried to leave. The police do not have to tell her that she's free to leave at any time. Interesting. It's just not the case. Very interesting. All right, uh, Maria, thank you so much. Tamara, thank you. We're going to be talking about this case a lot. Thank over you. The summer.